Hi, and welcome to this lecture. This lecture will focus on the types of bones that you'll see in the body and the anatomy of these bones. Now, there are four classes of bones, and they are all determined by shape. You have long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. Here's a figure to show you the different kinds of bones. Let's take a look at the short bone first. These are bones that are commonly found in the feet and the hands, the tarsals or carpals. They are almost cube shaped. You also have the long bone, which is the bone that most people are familiar with. It is a lot longer than it is wide. Examples would be the bones of the legs, both upper and lower bones, and the bones of the arms. Next we have the flat bones. The example of that would be the skull, bones of the skull, and things such as the bones in the ribs. And lastly we have the irregular bones, and these are bones that aren't really classified into any particular shape. Examples of these would be the vertebrae that you see within the spine. Alright, here's a figure of a long bone. We're going to look at the different parts. The first idea is that you are breaking this long bone up into different regions. On the ends of the bones, we have the epiphyses. In the shaft of the bone is the diaphysis. And in between the two, on, e on either end, is the metaphysis. Now as you look at the long bone, you're going to see quite a few different parts. Let's take a look from the top down. On the edges of the bone, you have articular cartilage, which is made of the base cartilage, hyaline cartilage. Those are on both ends. It is to help reduce friction in between bones at the joint. Next, we have the spongy bone, which is found in the epiphyses on both sides. And the spongy bone is where you find the red bone marrow. Underneath that, we have the epiphyseal line. Now, the epiphyseal line is in adults, in children. It is called the epiphyseal plate. It is commonly called the growth plate. Now, on the edges of the bone, we have the compact bone that is there for strength and support. Next, we have the medullary cavity, which is the inside the diaphysis of the bone. It is a cavity that has blood vessels and or nerves running through it. In children, it has or can have a little bit of red bone marrow. In adults, it has yellow bone marrow, which is the inactive red bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow typically has a ton of adipose tissue in it or fat tissue. On the inside of the medullary cavity, we have, we have the end osteum. It is the lining of the medullary cavity. In this lining, you have the typical bone cells, the osteoprogenitor cells that can give rise to osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and osteocytes. On the outside edge, we have the periosteum. That is the outer covering. It is exactly like the end osteum, only you find it on the outside. It has these cells as well. And we have perforating fibers. These are fibers that are helping to connect the periosteum to the underlying bone tissue. We also have arteries that enter and exit this bone through nutrient foramen, or holes, in the outer covering of the bone. So let's take a look at the periosteum. Um, it is a tough sheath covering the outer surface of the bone. It has an outer fibrous layer of dense irregular connective tissue that allows it to provide strength in all directions. It protects the bone from surrounding structures. Blood vessels and nerves help anchor to the bone surface. And it's the attachment site for ligaments and tendons. That is one of the reasons that it is so difficult to pull a ligament or tendon off of the bone you'll typically pull a piece of the bone with it. It does have an inner cellular layer. These contain the cells that I mentioned before, the osteoprogenitor, osteoblasts, and osteoclasts. And the perforating fibers are collagen fibers. Here's a close-up view of the, of the periosteum. Here's the fibrous layer that is there for support. The cellular layer, which contains the osteoprogenitor cells osteoblasts, osteoclasts, osteocytes, and the perforating fibers that are 
linking the two together, the periosteum to the underlying bone tissue. The endosteum is on the inner covering in the medullary cavity. It is an incomplete layer of cells. It does have all the cells that I mentioned before, and it is a tough sheath that is there for support. The blood supply flows through the nutrient foramens, which is that small opening in the outer covering of the bone. You will see arteries enter and veins exit here. You also have nerves that supply the bone, which is part of the reason that your bones hurt when you break them. They accompany the blood vessels through the foramen, so you find them in addition to the blood vessels following through the foramen itself. And it, they innervate the bone, periosteum, endosteum, and the marrow cavity, basically every part of the bone. And they are mainly sensory nerves. The red bone marrow, it is hemopoietic, which means they form the blood cells. That's all blood cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. It does contain reticular connective tissue, immature blood cells, and fat. Now in children, the red bone marrow is located in the spongy bone and medullary cavity of long bones, as I mentioned before. And in adults, it is in portions of the axial skeleton, mainly in the proximal epiphyses of the humerus and femur, and in places like the skull, vertebrae, ribs, sternum, and os coxae. Yellow bone marrow is the red bone marrow that has degenerated. You incorporate a lot of fat into this bone marrow. And the interesting thing is, in, it may convert back to red bone marrow under times of stress. Stress here being things such as severe anemia. And anemia is where you have reduced red blood cells within the blood. So converting that yellow bone marrow back to the red helps the body produce additional erythrocytes or red blood cells. Here's a figure showing the different areas of the body and the adult body that is in which you can find the red bone marrow. As mentioned the skull, epiphysis of the humerus, most of the axial skeleton including the vertebrae, ribs, sternum, pelvis, and the epiphysis of the femur.